Welcome to Long Arm Wednesday. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop. I'm very happy to see you here today. Uh, I didn't get what I wanted to get done for Long Arm Wednesday before I got to when we needed to film Long Arm Wednesday. So we're doing what I want to do on a quilt. It's kind of an artsy quilt. It's actually a t-shirt quilt. Uh, it's kind of an odd shape, I have to say. It's like 99 inches by 53 inches. It's not my quilt. I'm going to do something fun on it. So what I've decided to do <laughs> is, <laughs> Pop's giggling behind you, um, try to do something a little artsy on it. Because it is such, it's twice as long as it is wide, it's uh, three t-shirts long uh, across and six down. And it's, it's very well done. It's got like Kiss and like Neil Diamond and Led Zeppelin and Bob Marley. It's got like awesome, really good bands. And it's t-shirts are from like 77, 74, 73, 72, like all sorts of tours and stuff like that. So it's really awesome. So I wanted to do, instead of just doing overall over this thing, is do sign something a little bit artsy fartsy. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of a hand. Did I put my book? Okay, I kind of did. Okay. So... I'm I'm trying to kind of do like a, a artsy fartsy of that. So kind of the the person who's going to it, they love guitars. So I went online and I looked at some kind of fancy stitch guitars and and just kind of did my own thing. I'm just giving myself a filler in the background. Of course, I'm going to do it neater as I'm I'm, I'm progressing through the quilt. But this just kind of gives me a rough idea how I want to lay it out. So I want to practice it because I've never did a guitar before, except for right here, right now, um, on that. So I want to kind of give it a little stitch out first on my scrappy sheet. Uh, it's just a blue top sheet that I've had. It's, it was a bit see-through, so I didn't really want to put it on any quilts. And I thought it would be great for doing arts and stuff and practicing stitches and, you know, styles on quilts and stuff like that. If I really want to do this on a quilt, I'll put it on it. But here's kind of where I do all my practicing bits. You can see there's some already on here. It's been months and so on and so forth. So anyways, I've had some fun with it. So I kind of did like a little pencil sketch of what I would think in my mind, how I would like this fancy little guitar to go. Of course, it's not going to be just like that because I'm going to change it as I go because that's just who I am. I'm going to go with the flow and whatever looks good, I'm just going to go with it. So I've kind of sketched out. I got the little fleur up here. Here's the uh, fret neck and then here's the hole and then here's the body of the guitar. That's kind of just giving me guidelines. I'm not going to stick with this. I'm not going to go right on those lines. I'm just kind of going to give it a little, you know, do my own flair. And for the hole, Either you can set something up or you have a template or something like that. Uh, you know, sweet and sour Chinese dish from the local, you know, guest walkie. Uh, it works just fine. I'm going to use that as a little tracer around to give me the size of the hole that I need. Of course, you can use your disappearing ink. I just did a couple of lines with pencil just to give me a guideline. Like I said, this is just my scrappy bit. If I was doing it on a customer's quilt, I, of course, would do it either with disappearing stuff or with chalk itself. Chalk is best because it's easier to warm up. So we have it just at the regular um, 12 stitches per inch, and I have it just off the belt. It's all loosey-goosey, and I'm just going to go and have some fun. I will put it back on the belts to do the fret neck for sure. Um, and then all the little uh, lines that go across it as well. I will probably lock it. I want to channel lock it, channel lock it, channel lock it. So, but for right now, we're just going to start off with the toppy part. And you can put the little um, uh, twister peg thingies to tighten the strings. I, I meant to get all the lingo jingo of a guitar before I started, but clearly I did not, and I apologize. But uh, hey, got fret neck. There we go. <laughs> All right, so I kind of want to come up on an angle and do this and have those fret neck lines come up a little bit more than what I've actually just kind of sketched them out here. I had something in my mind. I just kind of wanted to give myself a bit of a dimension to stick between and, and go within there. So I'm just going to put a couple of locking stitches. And I yo, I, I chose, yo, I yo, I chose shadow. Uh, just so it would show up on this very minty green fabric and you can see it without any issues and you know exactly what I was working on. Having some fun. Doing some designy stuff, you know. Don't be afraid to be experimental, you know. Have a piece of fabric that you can do that with and that you're not afraid to 
uh, mess up on, it's no big deal, you know, that sort of thing. Something that you can, like I said, I'm just chosen old top sheet and some nice bright minty green fabric and, and went from there. And you can do swirls and leaves and petals and you know, you name it, it's, it's there. You could do whatever you like. Okay, so now I kind of got my little part done here. I could come back and do little waves in between it to make it nice and thick, or I could try and retrace it and just kind of do like a, you know, a coffee, even though sometimes it's not always gonna be on the line, but the thicker it is, it's pretty, you know, intense it is, right? So uh, I think I will just kind of stick with doing my fret neck. I'm so happy I learned the word. I'm just going to keep saying it and saying it. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to attach it back on the belt. Takes just oboe to momento. Gonna slip it in here. Well, I thought maybe the cat was on his bed. You would have got a little five minutes of Clive time. He's, he's been missing his TV time. He was, uh, he was actually up on my sewing table the other day looking at the camera. We were just ready to shoot. I'm like, no, not ready yet, buddy. <laughs> this one doesn't want to slip in. What did I do wrong here? I'm not lining it up. That's what it was. I wasn't lining it up right. Okay, just give it a nice tight. Okay. And I'll take it back off, but as you progress, you're going to have to take it off and on, off and on. I mean, that's, that's how you, you, you know, if you want to progress down your project. So I'm just going to start right about there. And you want to make these lines thick because they are technically the outside lines of the fret and the strings all in one. That's what you're trying to stitch down here is as in a depth perception sort of thing. So if you can lock in and you know it's not going anywhere, it's only on a 90 here and I can go up and down maybe three or four times to really give that line a bit of depth, go slow though. It's not, it's not a race, just trying to get to where you want to come down to. My space is about down to here, and then I can still put my circle in the center, or I could stop and put my circle and then come continue down. It's, you know, it's, it's all up to you. It's, you're, the, you're the artist, right? I'm just showing you what I got going on. <coughs> Sorry. So that's two. You can see how thick it's come there. It'll be three. And because it, it's going over the same spot, the same threads, the same holes in the fabric, you have a tendency for thread breaks. So just be careful. And like I said, it's not a race. Okay, that's four. See, that seems really good to me. That's, I like that depth from that one. I think we'll just uh, stop that, lock a couple single stitches, and go over to the next spot. And of course, you can measure this out via ruler, whatever you like, make your spots. If you want them every inch and a half bang on, then, you know, by golly, that's your choice. You can do it right that. So I'm going to try and go about an inch, because this was a four, actually, we go three quarters of an inch, because um, this was a uh, four inch ruler. So we'll go like that and that and these are just general guidelines for how i want to come down uh on the on the fret neck right okay move those off to the side here's my next spot and of course i want to come down right where i had ended that last little swirl that last little fancy touch that i was trying to do to the top i want to come right at that swirl part lock in lock it in at my 90 and then come straight down and do the same thing do four four lines Line up with this one, then come back, just be gentle. I have a tendency to be a bit of a lead foot Larry and drive a bit crazy, so that, you know, I'm, I'm more saying it for myself than for you. <laughs> Slow down, calm down, chillax. <laughs> Look at your foot. We had enough raspberries from the garden the other day to fill up a whole cookie sheet to put in the freezer to freeze. I was so excited. Like, I don't think we've ever had that many raspberries. This is the third year we've had a raspberry wild bush, I guess you would call it. So we're very excited. Couldn't believe it. It's like three, holy, a whole cookie sheet. It was a big cookie sheet too, not a little one. And of course, 
sometimes you could have drawn this out instead of stitching it out, but I kind of want to get the feel of how I want to work it stitch wise and doing the fret and everything else before I get to my customer's quilt. I want it satisfied in my mind that I'm not going to go to and go, ooh, eh, I don't know, is that going to work okay? I don't know, I'm a little nervous. Nah, no, I don't want to be nervous. I'm going to go, Bob's your uncle, Bobby, Bibby, Bobby, Boo, we got this. <laughs> I don't know. And a high sugar tic tac before I started. <laughs> All right. I guess it could have just hopped over, but nonetheless, either, either, or. Okay, and we'll come it right up. See how that's following that line? We're gonna follow this line right here as it comes to the bottom point of that swirl to make that other string. It's locked, okay. We really have a blast doing these videos and really appreciate your feedback and your encouragement and loving the videos. We really, really do, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I figure we're all learning, you know. I'm, I'm okay to show my mistakes. It's like I said, sometimes it's not always what, what, you, what to do, it's what not to do. You know, that's all about life. I'm gonna come up a little bit higher on the curve of this um, little swirl here because it seems to be more in line with where I was going. I don't wanna shorten it, so I wanna come right in, in line with it. And that would be a little bit higher on the, the swirl there. Did I lock it? No, I didn't. There we go. Okay. I've come pretty darn close to my lines. And of course, if you wanted your outside lines to be more in depth, you could certainly do that because they, they would represent the outside neck of the fret, right? So the neck of the, uh, the, the guitar. Okay, now we got that part done. We're gonna trace around the circle that I was getting from the sweet and sour sauce. Just move those little ones. See, I'm obsessed with trimming the threads. Just move them all over the side. <laughs> okay. It probably would be easier off the belts, but I'll do the best I can on the belts. Okay. So you want to line it up. <clears throat> probably should use my ruler plate. Hold on. Where's my ruler plate? Hold on. Okay. Oh. My pocket got hooked on the edge. <laughs> Talking about getting wrapped up in your project. All right, slip the ruler plate on. Uh, with practice, this actually was quite intimidating to try and get this off and on for the longest time. I was seeming like I was fighting with it and it was giving me quite the wrestling match and I was not happy. So it's just it's a matter of practice and getting used to it and popping it off and on and, and you really do get used to it. It's just You, you just got to get over that little intimidation of, okay, it's, you know, they'll... The spring is fighting me and I feel like it's going to spring back up at you and it's really not. All right, so line this up the best you can. Kind of, I'm trying to pick like a center point of the circle here, lining it up with one of my center lines and that's kind of, it's going to kind of give me a, a nice even circle. Okay, so I like that. Let's first start. This of course is my, I'm gonna butt my foot up right against the edge of the container. Okay. Let's get those bottom threads first. Okay, and then just be slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race, right? You know, this is your little artsy project and don't just rest your foot up against it. And there's all sorts of things you could use in the kitchen. Just don't abuse it, you know what I mean? It's just the foot hitting the plastic. It's no big deal. Okay, hold on. Shift my hand. Just riding that foot along the edge. Nice and slow. Oh, okay, that's not going to work because now i got the back part to deal with. Okay, I guess it's going to bigger be a bigger hole than I anticipated. That I didn't think about. See? Lesson learned. <laughs> I only thought about one way around, not all the way around. <laughs> Oops. Okay. That was a little wonky on the hole. I am going to make one with the machine when I do it on the customer's quilt. But you get the gist. <laughs> 
Okay. Now you can highlight that, you can color it all in, you can make it all dark. Uh, I'm going to add a couple more little fret lines here, right in line. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to lock it in this position, come down to where I need it to start, put that, and I just want to continue past the hole just a little bit, just the, the hole of the guitar, three and four, okay? Now line her up. Of course, you can use a ruler to help line you up properly. I'm at three quarters on the top there, three quarters on the bottom. Move it over a smidge because you want it to be actually three quarters because you already have a half in, or a quarter inch of your ruler foot. Okay, lock it in place. Of course, you're getting close to there up, right? Unlock it, just shy of three quarters, right close to the center hole, and then down. Two, three, four. Over. Okay, we're getting right on, I think so. And then one more after this. You know, and I just went searching for a couple of guitar pictures. That's all. Well, that's where I got my inspiration from. You know, flip through a magazine. You know, draw inspiration from anything. Okay, so now that part is done. I don't really need the ruler plate or it on its belt anymore. Can tidy up these threads. Okay, let's take it off. Oops, helps if you unlock it first. <laughs> okay, that way. This is where I was really intimidated. I'm like, oh, it's gonna smack me in the face. And really, it really can't. Just being a silly nilly. <laughs> All right, see, easy peasy. Ruler plate off, extra room, free space to do whatever I like. Okay, so now that we have our top part, our frets, our circle wackadoodle hole a little bit there, and our bottom little frets, and I kind of, like I said, it was just a design idea here. Of course, I, you can do whatever you like. Maybe I'll roll it just a little bit. Give me a little bit of free rainer around the bottom, now that I've done the top. Okay, there we go, that's a bit better. That way you can come down and be all crazy like. Okay, so uh, I'd like to come probably around the bottom here, maybe do like a little, not necessarily swirl, but maybe like, um, I don't know, half a leaf or something like that. Just something unique, not unique, I don't know. You'll fill it in and you'll figure it out. Just do something flowery and fun. You can start over on the side here, work your way up. Go work our way in the center. Okay, sorry, microphone's itching my back. <clears throat> okay, and I kind of want to keep with that little bounce for the body of the guitar, the guitar. Things I wish I learned how to play. Just fill it in. You're just, you're making an imaginary guitar that serves your purpose of what you want it to be in your art. You know, you can be as crazy or as non-crazy as you like to give it the body. You know, and from there you can kind of come up around the side again, and maybe just do a little swirl, there, come back, another little one there, you're just filling, you're making the body with your creative stitches, so why not, like, have some serious fun, right? 
And of course, it doesn't have to stay within the normal body of the guitar, right? It can be whatever you make it to be. You can fill it in, you can just do little bits, you can, you know, stick with leaves. Of course, you can build up the outside as many times as you feel you need to give it the depth of the body, body shape, right? Oh, there he is, he's wanting his five minutes of fame. You know, your machine is there to, to learn and somewhat kind of abuse, and I guess in a way. It's yours to yours to use, so use it, right? Something like that. Oh no. Like I said, just give it a bunch of depth. Going over stitches, back again. You can do some little swirls up on the outside if you like. You know, I mean, fill in the space all romantic and fun-like, you know, I mean, the option's up to you. Okay, let's do that there. I'll fill in the little guitar hole, and hopefully it's looking all right. I kind of like it, you know, like I said. And, of course, it's going to be on a very big scale, being I have... 99 inches to work with to put this all in so I've kind of averaged it out was it the top part was about three quarters of a block and then the fret went down in through at least four of the blocks four and a bit of the blocks and then from the body of the guitar went from block four around to block five to block six you know that sort of way you really kind of had to plan it out in your mind to make sure you're giving it um uh, proper dimension. You don't want the body to be too big and the fret neck too small or, or you know, you kind of kind of give a proper, oops, proportion. Sorry, hopped out there. Hit the wrong button too. Jeepers creepers, all sorts of boo-boos. Let's try it again, shall we? Oops, cut every thread. I use glide thread a lot. For one, my machine, uh, Walt likes it and, uh, uh, and I'm I'm not up for arguing. So if he if he likes it, by golly, I like it, and we're happy campers together. So um. speaking of happy campers, you check out Weekend Project. We made a happy camper pillow. <laughs> it was really quite cute. Okay, so we're gonna come over here into the center more this time, and not all the way up by the strings. Come on, work with my hair. There we go. Just lock your stitches around in your far better circle than I did <laughs> and to fill it in you can just do a nice really kind of really tight meander really close together and it would give a lot of depth especially if you were using like a couple of layers of batting it would make the outside of the guitar all those curls and swirls and stuff like that would really pop would really give it some pretty awesome texture I'll just fill that in. You know, you can do it as close or as loose as you like. I think if you want to give it that dark hole to resi resi the sound, I'm, there's a word I'm looking for. It starts with R, and I'm sorry. Residual, maybe that's it. I don't know. That the sound to reverberate, reverberate. Maybe that was it. I don't know. <laughs> One of those words. <laughs> I'm a quilter. <laughs> sorta. Um, to, uh, so that you can hear it through the hole. So you want to make sure, you know, it is dark. It's always dark. It's, a, it's a, something that's always cut out. So try and 
do it either dark solid colored in with all the stitches or do something really tight and uh, that fills it all in so there a swirl or a little meander like this one Well, this is what I'm going to do. And of course, you'd want to do go around the hole a couple of times to make that nice and dark and give that depth. And you could always put more on it. I mean, it's completely up to you. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a fantasy style swirl thingy and, and having some fun on, on a customer's quilt. So um, she gave me free artistic rain, so I really wanted to practice it out first and uh, and hope that uh, I'm sure she's gonna like it so it's kind of cool when you do like a big t rock t-shirt quilt like that and then you have um, the option to instead of just slap an overall edge to edge on it do something really kind of funky and unique and and you know artsy in the process because the the back side of it is being stitched up on black and I'm using red and this smoky color for the quilt it's going to make that the guitar in red just pop like nobody's business okay, almost there That's, I hope you can kind of see it. You, you see what it looks like. Uh, it's not really going to get much more than that. So, uh, like I said, I was just practicing an idea out of uh, how I want to do it on a really big scale, like a really big, really big scale. Um, so, hopefully, uh, she really likes it. And like I could come up here and done that a couple more times to reinforce that. Maybe another swirl here or whatever. But uh, other than that, I think it looks pretty cool. Hopefully, you guys do too. All right, so take care, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic Wednesday and uh, you're really enjoying your summer so far. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And remember, if you want to get notices of new videos, click the little bell button and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, thanks, everybody. Take care and bye-bye.